Welcome back to Millennial Pagan Podcast, the podcast that aims to discuss issues and hot topics influencing the pagan world from a millennial perspective, focusing on how millennials intend to affect witchcraft, magic, and polytheistic worship. Hi, Dara. Hi, Autumn. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we are back. We are actually in a brand new studio. Woo, new uh, studio. In a new apartment that I just moved into with uh, our guest, Sunshine. Woo! Jara moving in with girlfriend. <laughs> Hi, Sunshine. Hi, Jara. Hi, Autumn. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Your home is well. The the portion of it that I know you're comfortable with me saying is beautiful is beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know you guys are in m- a hectic moving world right now. Yes the the era of unpacking. Oof. I, I do. Yeah. I do not wish that on people who don't need it. Yeah, I don't want to do it for a while. I understand. <laughs> the packing is the easy part, almost, because you can just throw things into boxes, and if you do that, then the unpacking is the hard part. No, no. You, you don't know me. No? Mm, no. Oh. I organize while I pack, Uh huh. <laughs> which makes it take, you know, two to three times as long as it needs to. But then you know what, where the boxers are supposed to go, like what room? That's, that's why I do it, yes. And then unpacking's easier. See, yeah. theoretically. Yeah. yeah. One would hope. Yeah, but, right. but then again, I I only had two rooms to pack, and she had an entire house. This is true. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's uh, it's getting there. Yay. It's getting there. That's yeah. that's the good part. So we have our own studio. Well, it's kind of our own studio. It's our studio and Sunshine Studio because Sunshine, what do you do for a living? I am a massage therapist, and you are a something master. I am a Reiki master, yes. I think that's why I asked you to be here, because you know (laughs) things about stuff and about uh, healing with touch. Yes. Yay. Laying on of hands. Yeah, so we will love to talk to you about that. But first, like our tradition, we must listen to your coming of witch story. A coming of witch story. If you wish to share it. Yes, actually. Um, Oddly enough, um, I learned about Wicca in massage school. Ooh. I know. Mm -hmm. Um, I was raised Mormon and left about 17 years old and became a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I left Christianity after going to um, a sermon that was how to become a millionaire God's way. Okay. Yeah, no. Um mm-hmm. I don't I don't think I've heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> um they were they were trying to build a new church. Mm-hmm. The one out on Brown, they call it the Boob Church. The Boob Church? Yes, it has three domes. Oh. Okay. And from afar it kind of looks like boobs. Ah, like the Tetons. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Um so they were they were in process of building that Mm -hmm. and they needed money and Uh, what better way to get money than to tithe your people and what better way to get more money from tithing by making them rich so it just it felt very Mm pyramid-y self-serving oh okay um and not a church that i felt comfortable being a part of and Mm -hmm. that began actually my spiritual journey which is what brought me to um, paganism in massage school, um, one of the people was wearing a pentacle, and I had never seen a pentacle before. Mormon, yeah, child raised not, not upstate too New far York, yeah. yeah. Um, and I asked about it, and they told me, and what? And then they said, yeah, kind of like the movie, the craft, ah. and um, practical magic was right about then too. And so I started researching, and it. It was like a light went on, a remembering. It wasn't, it wasn't new for me. It was like I was remembering something I'd already known, mm-hmm. and it felt like I was at home. It mm-hmm. was just so. Um, at, from that, I asked my sister, and apparently my sister in who was in Mississippi had been practicing for a while as well. Ooh, I know, <laughs> and she was excited. So she researched some stores, and one of them was Jane's. Oh, yes, Dragon Star. <laughs> Dragon mm-hmm. Star. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that, that began my whole um, searching, like the end of my search, I, but but start researching. Right. It was a researching um, of that and which direction, because mm-hmm. there's the Asatru, there's the Norse. I, dab- I don't want to say dabbled. Sorry, guys. Um, I, I <laughs> checked that out for a while. Right. Um, and 
then I went, I tried Wicca. Mm -hmm. For me, Wicca is too regiment. Mm -hmm. You memorize. I am horrible at memorization. And I tried. I tried so hard. <laughs> and I joined a group and who was mostly Wicca. Um, and that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And so back to Jane's I went. And she told me about reclaiming. And I went to my very first. Um, it was actually a magical Thursday. And they were teaching about fire. Mm -hmm. Sunshine, fire. And um, just being there, it was... It was exactly what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I had come home, and I have not looked back. Yay. So, yeah. Would you consider your mm, magical practice also a religion? No. No. Is there a why? Or um, I see religion as mm -hmm. centered around God aspect. Um, my magics kind of intertwine with them, but are not mutually exclusive. Oh, so okay. I do magic and I do my spirituality and sometimes I sorry sometimes okay. I intertwine those uh -huh. um, but for the most part not really so do you have specific deities you call on mm, yes for different reasons so when we are going to do our um, cleansing of the house mm -hmm. I will be calling on Thor for protection because Thor protects the working man and the um, innocent. Mm -hmm. So I'll be, me personally, I'll be calling on Thor. Also um, Diana, because she is wisdom. And so I'll, I'll bring in a, f a few of the mm -hmm. particular deities. Um, so whatever it is that I'm looking for, I will call upon that deity. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so what kind of magical training have you had? Have I had? Um, so when I first began my um, Wicca journey, it was books. Mm -hmm. I read books the way some people drink water, and it was just book after book after book. And But it was the applying what I learned that I had a very difficult time with. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until reclaiming that I learned how to apply everything that I had learned, and that just exploded my practice. But it helped having that, that reading education ahead of time. Yes, mm -hmm. it did. It did. And then you've you've gone to several witch camps so far. Correct? I have, yes. This year will be my fourth. Yay! Yes, it's uh, one of one of my joys of life, and one of the things that I look forward to is mm -hmm. spending an entire week off radar in the <laughs> middle of the redwoods. Right. No, Com I understand. Completely no cell service whatsoever, except Man. by a very old tree. You can, yeah, you have to <laughs> hike a half hour oh. to get any cell service. Well, that means you really need to want it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Do you want to tell us of the significance of your name? Sunshine. Um, as long as I've known people, um, they have always mentioned how sunshiny my personality is. <laughs> um, and it just ends up being um, a nickname. Mm -hmm. People who've never met each other, when they see me, hey, sunshine. And then um, they would just, I don't know if it's they forget my name or they just like Sunshine. They would start <laughs> introducing me to their friends. This is Sunshine. And so when um, I thought of a magical name for myself. It was already organically there. <laughs> it was already there. It wasn't something I had to stretch for. I just had to think, you know, yeah. apply it. I had yeah. to apply it. So. Nope, oh, that makes sense. So we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to dive into the history of Reiki and connecting it to massage therapy and touch magic or touch healing.
All right, and we are back with Millennial Pagan Podcast, and of course we have uh, my girlfriend and roommate, Sunshine. Hey, and, hey, hey. Yeah. Um, at so, least you put girlfriend above roommate. Yeah, yeah. That, I think she would have thrown something at me. She's got a water bottle now. Oh, yeah, she does. <laughs> hmm. Purified water. Yes. Um, but so, uh, like we said before, we have her on because she is a Reiki master. And she does a massage therapy. And uh, there's a lot of, um, a, a lot of I, I guess, misconceptions on the uh, the whole aspect of of what reiki actually is and how uh how pagans use reiki or at least you know in in, in a massage you know what i'm trying to say there's a lot but, of interest in reiki yeah. going on right now and i think there there's um some misconceptions or even some uh diluting of the knowledge and of the history so i'm hoping that sunshine can kind of give everybody out there in the listening world a good idea of what is reiki and the history of it okay reiki is um japanese and the word rei means universal or god um, and ki is like chi. Um, it's energy, universal energy or God energy. Um, it is energy that is everywhere. It's kind of like the force mm -hmm. um, where it's everywhere and in everything. And um, being a Reiki master, you become attuned to that particular energy flow. So even though it's everywhere, it's a way to tap in. A healing Jedi. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. I think she did too. The face that I just got was like, oh, I'm using that next time. Yeah, no, um, Reiki is a laying on of hands mode of healing. Mm -hmm. It actually is um, hand positions on the body in a specific pattern to create um, the Reiki flow. Mm -hmm. uh, where it came from is there was a man, Mikao Usui, and... I could be saying that completely wrong, and I apologize in advance. Um, he is, he brought back the um, hands-on healing, the way that um, Buddha and Jesus, kind of like in, in that aspect. Um, so he created Reiki, mm -hmm. and then he taught people. Um, the next person in the uh, lineage is um, Chujiro. Hayashi, mm -hmm. and um, he was a doctor, and um, then it was Hawaii Takata. Uh, she was one of the first women. Um, she only created 22 Reiki masters, uh, one of whom was Beth Gray, mm -hmm. and um, then Marsha Craven, if you've ever taken any classes um, at uh, the Healing Arts Connection. Mm -hmm. um, she was one of the, she was one of the founders of the Healing Arts Connection, and um, I learned from Marcia Craven. Ah, so um, the original <laughs> founder of Reiki, going back to him, it, did he make any comments or statements about how he founded Reiki? Or Yeah, there's a whole story, actually. Um, so story there's a time. book that I have by Diane Stein. It's called Essential Reiki. Um, it has the story of... Um, what Mikao Usui uh, went through mm -hmm. to um, find it. Um, he was a samurai and... Um, Not in an ancient sense of no, samurai. No, no okay. he was uh, born in 1865 and oh, he okay. died in 1926. Oh, so uh, pretty far back, but not like... Not, not where we're thinking feudal Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Correct. Because you say samurai and we got some Naruto fans who are like, ha! Ah. All right, so he um, he wanted to know about the method of healing that Jesus used. Mm -hmm. um, his quest led him to Europe, China, India, and America. Um, he went away for, I can't remember how many days, um, but he placed 21 stones in front of him in order to count the number of his days of fast. So he mm -hmm. fasted for 21 days Ooh. for this knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, during the time, during this um, fasting, he read in the sutras, he sang, and he meditated. Um, nothing happened until the very last day uh, when he saw a shining light moving toward him at a great speed. The light became larger um, until it hit him in the center of his forehead. Um, he saw millions of little bubbles in all colors of the rainbow. 
Um, this is actually all by read to us by um, Hawaii Takata. Mm -hmm. She is the one who has imparted this information. So oh. um, you can look that up, but that's yeah. Th there may be some discrepancies in what actually happened, mm -hmm. but this is the story as she related. Right. Um, when he returned to his normal state of consciousness, um, the sun was high in the sky, and um, he had a memory of Sanskrit um, symbols in front of him. Um, he was excited, and he rushed down the mountain from mm -hmm. where he had been doing his his uh, fasting. fasting. Um, he stubbed his toe on a rock, Ooh. and he fell. He instinctively grabbed his toe with both hands. After a few moments, the bleeding stopped, and the pain disappeared. Mm -hmm. And that was is considered his first miracle. Oh. He's known for four. Oh, okay. All in the, pretty much the same time period. Mm -hmm. He stopped in an inn because he was very hungry. Um, they recommended he not eat a large meal right. after fasting for 21 days because then he would be sick, but he ate a huge breakfast, and the fact that he was fine afterwards is considered his second miracle. Yeah, and, uh, when um, working with adoptive dogs, I remember a lot of people saying if you um, leave food out for dogs, sometimes they'll overeat and their stomachs will become hard, and that will be more detrimental to them. So mm -hmm. I can kind of see where that would work for humans as well. You don't want to <laughs> overstep yourself after having an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. But after 21 days, you know, you, you're ravenous and yeah. your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Oh, yeah. Almost literally. So <laughs> um, he did notice while he was eating his breakfast that. But, um, the granddaughter of the innkeeper had a toothache Ooh. and um, he laid his hands on her face and she immediately felt better. Mm. And that was his third miracle. Um, he returned to his monastery. Um, he related his story to his mentor, um, who was an abbot and who was bedridden with arthritis. Mm -hmm. um, the abbot asked him to heal him and he laid his hands on his abbot, made his, the abbot feel better. And that was his last miracle. Mm-hmm. So, um, he spent several years in Tokyo treating many illnesses. Um, so one of the things that, um, an ethical principle of Reiki, mm -hmm. um, is just for today, do not worry. Just for today, do not anger. Honor your parents, teachers, and elders. Earn your living honestly. Show gratitude to everything. And those, um, and when you learn Reiki, those are some things that you uh, aspire to. Mm -hmm. So, they're good, um, good, uh, good rules to live by too. Just, they are. just kind of, especially in the uh, in the pain, pagan aspect, mind right. aspect of it as well. Pretty Absolutely. simplistic, but you can take them and form them to fit how you want to live and be a good person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you talked about your lineage and it very much like how initiatory Wicca or initiatory paganism works. That's how you kind of define where you came from is should every Reiki master be able to say, this is my lineage? I think that if you are going to offer mm -hmm. to teach someone Reiki, mm -hmm. that you should be able to show your lineage. How did you come about Reiki? Mm -hmm. Did you come about it? Um, I don't want to say honestly, but did you come about it honestly? Did mm -hmm. you receive it from an actual Reiki master, someone who um, received the attunement and was able to give it to you? Or did you receive it from someone who said they could? Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that uh, lineage to help um, differentiate between um, someone who says and someone who has Reiki. And it's it's a good thing to track your lineage too, just because you want to you want to make sure that you're getting the the proper Reiki training. Right, correct. But do you say that getting your training through this lineage is the right way to do it? That you can't just pick up a book and become a Reiki master? Oh yes. Um. So Reiki is an attunement. It's mm -hmm. you can use energy, but this is a specific form. Right. Um. A specific way of 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 using mm -hmm. the universal energy. So magic and Reiki are two completely different things. Right. You can, it can kind of feel the same, mm -hmm. um, but they're not. Right. It's okay. two, two different, two different types of magic. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, so 
because I know that with reclaiming, we're non-initiatory. And you talked a lot about learning Wicca and paganism through books. Um, because Reiki is a physical and a touch and a healing and then learning how to work with that specific energy, it's very important to have a physical teacher. Yes. Okay. Um, so you can learn a lot from books. Um, of course. I learned yeah. Reiki before I found this Reiki book. And mm -hmm. the Reiki book just opened me up more. So you mm -hmm. can learn quite a bit. But for the actual Reiki... Um, like doing. Attunement mm -hmm. to actually use the Reiki energy, you need to be attuned by someone who's been attuned. Right. And like tuning like a, a tuning fork, like you need to be put into the right vibrations. They, they, they open up the channel to mm -hmm. Reiki inside of you. Okay. All right. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. So how, um, going, going through the proper channels, how long would it take one to become a, uh, a Reiki master? Um, I learned in a weekend. Um, it was intense. Um, and mm -hmm. it was a lot of memorization. There's symbols that you use, mm -hmm. um, and the symbols help open up the energy um, portal a little wider mm -hmm. um, and help the energy go and do what it is that you need it to do. Although with Reiki energy, it just does what it needs to do. You can't really direct it. Right. But you can, like, shine it a little brighter or a little wider, mm -hmm. bring some more of a specific, like, uh, inset instead of physical you can bring an emotional um energy with the symbols mm -hmm. um so it was a lot of memorization but i did learn it um in a weekend and i was i had an energy headache Ooh. for almost a week afterwards no was, i believe it, it was absolutely intense mm -hmm. so um if i had a choice I'd probably do it again because <laughs> I like to pack everything into one and then mm -hmm. just deal with the rest later. Yeah. And unpack it later. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, have you seen any Reiki classes that take longer for those of us who, who can't shove it all down in one sitting? Um, I haven't really looked. Right. Um, I had been told that I use Reiki mm -hmm. and I would be it would behoove me to go and take a Reiki course. And that was Again. the first I had mm -hmm. heard of Reiki. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, you know, as a massage therapist, you kind of do energy work anyway. Right. So it wasn't something that, you know, that I had to stre stretch for. Mm -hmm. But if it's, if energy work is not something that you do regularly, I would recommend maybe a longer course just to um, orient yourself with the feeling of energy. Mm -hmm. um, whereas as a massage therapist, I can yeah. kind of pack that into a weekend and not right. really not really stretch for any of that. You got your prerequisites in before the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Now, one of the big things, because I, I've, I've talked to people, you know, um, about Reiki, about, you know, massage therapy, how they kind of coincide with each other. And I, I had to kind of give a loose explanation as to what Reiki was to a friend of mine that I work with. And he kind of just, you know, brushed off. I was like, that's, that's not a real thing. Blah, blah, blah. What, <laughs> what, what, what would you say to the skeptics? Like, like what, um, what, what, what have you seen? What have you experienced either through receiving or giving Reiki to calm the, the, the people that are saying that it's a, a fake thing? Well, um, I have no problem with people thinking something's fake. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to believe in it, that's totally okay. Reiki's going to work whether or not they believe in it. Mm -hmm. um, some things that I've noticed as soon as I took the Reiki course, um, my healing in massage has grown exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, I have had someone on my table who was in, um, like their back was cramping, and I would just hold my hands on them and um, allow the Reiki um, energy to flow through. And their head popped up and they turned their head and they said, what did you just do? Because the pain just went away. Yay. <laughs> so um, it, it doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't always work, but sometimes people are a little more resistant mm -hmm. um, to the laying on of hands healing, even though they're in for a massage. Mm -hmm. They just don't allow that energy transfer. Um, but if you allow, you don't have to believe. You just have to allow. If you allow, it will work. Just like magic. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
What I've noticed in the new age pagan community is that Reiki is growing in popularity pretty exponentially. Why would you think say that that is that that is? <laughs> oh, so um, Reiki doesn't really require any extra like a massage therapist. I have to I have to learn a lot mm -hmm. about um, physiology and biology and how the body works. With Reiki, you can heal. But you don't have to um, really know much more of anything. Mm -hmm. um, so they want to. They, I, I think maybe they feel that through Reiki they will feel magic more. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that can maybe happen. Is the more you work with energy, the more you feel the energy. So if they're using it both in their magical practice and in their healing practice. It's just, they're just going to um, increase both. Mm -hmm. But I, I couldn't say why they, a lot of people would, but maybe it's just they see a need for healing. Mm -hmm. And so they want to be part of that healing. Right. In a way that they personally can give back mm -hmm. to the community. Right. Which is, you know, not having to go to school for a, <laughs> a year for I, massage. Right. No, I understand. Um, do you think that there is some... I want to say plagiarism, but maybe, and I don't want to say fakes, but do you think there's some people who aren't legitimately Reiki masters going around saying they're Reiki masters? You, Most likely. I don't. YouTube Reiki ears. <laughs> I do Reiki ears. Um, Most likely. I'm, I'm sure that there are some very well-meaning people who've mm -hmm. learned enough about something and they feel very confident in what they do mm -hmm. and therefore they're touting themselves as a Reiki master. Um but if you have not received the attunement, you can be as confident as you want and you're not going to open someone else up to an attunement that you personally don't have. Right, right. Do you um, think that there's a way to tell, not, I wouldn't say on site, but like if if you were a, a person who wants to go find a, a Reiki specialist and you need that healing, how can you tell that the person that you're about to give money for, ask for help is? Um, you can ask for their lineage. You can mm -hmm. ask to see their certification, which I actually have on me, mm -hmm. um, You and their lineage, um, who they learned it from, how far back does it go, how many people has it been, has Passed it gone through. through. Right. Yeah. Um, if you, if they can't show you that, mm -hmm. um, or if it's not something that is an option that, for them to show you, um, then I wouldn't recommend giving them money okay. for a Reiki session. Is it um, uncommon to have so few people? Because your lineage, I'm looking at it now, is five people. Is that about average, or can you see pages on pages for some people? Um, I know I know someone um, who has nine people mm -hmm. for theirs. Um, it just depends on... You know, because um, Hawaii Takata did 22 people mm -hmm. before she passed, um, it was really expensive to mm -hmm. learn Reiki mastery. It's gotten a little more accessible, reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but one of those 22 people, you know, could have attuned a lot of people. Right. And then those people attuned a lot of people. Right. So it, I, I can see how it could have diluted significantly. Right. Because, you know, he did die in 1926. So, right. so it's been a while. I mean, you could assume how many people have been who can trace their Gardnerian lineage to Gardner at this oh, yeah. point. So, no, that totally makes sense. So let's, um, I think we've kind of got the idea of what Reiki is. Let's talk a little bit about massage therapy and uh, what you want some people to understand about massage therapy and and. So, well, go. So, so if if you could, kind of like kind of like we had our coming of witch story, uh, how about you kind of do your coming to massage therapy story? Ooh, right, that's a good so, one. I became a massage therapist 15 years ago. Um, this November it will be 16 years. Congratulations! Thank you. You're um, almost a teenager <laughs> in massaging, <laughs> right? I could almost drive my massage. <laughs> oh. um, yeah. Right. <laughs> no. Um, so uh, I was. For years, for five years, I did in I did daycare, mm -hmm. and then for a year, I did in home daycare, and then I did um, 
I worked for um, a plumbing supply company as an office manager. Mm -hmm. And um, I was not happy Mm -hmm. with what I was doing. And um, my then husband told me that I needed to find a career. Ah. Now, I personally would have preferred to have been an EMT Mm -hmm. or a firefighter. So I did a ride along with the firefighters and learned that I don't do well with blood. (laughs) Oh. It was a very difficult thing (laughs) that I I discovered. um, I, I get... I get dizzy, I get flushed, um, the top of my head prickles, and um, if I am around it too long, then I actually do pass out. Congratulations. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> At least you learned it before you got in class and paid a lot of money. But Yes. Um, yes. I, yeah. I believe that it's due to a trauma that I went through when mm-hmm. I was younger, but needless to say, mm-hmm. um, EMT was out. But I still wanted to help. Right. I still wanted to help people. And so I went... Um, looked at uh, physical therapy Mm -hmm. and learned that in physical therapy, there are many times you have to put people in a lot more pain than to make them feel better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Couldn't do it. I understand. Um, I was driving and, um, I heard a commercial for a massage therapy school. Mm -hmm. I was like, Hmm, well, you could try it. Yeah. So I went in and I had never had a massage before. Not once. So, um, looked into it, received a massage, thought it felt amazing, and signed up for class. Yay! <laughs> the the very next day that they were open for right. business. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a really interesting way to come about it. Like, I've never had a massage. I have no idea what this is about, so I'm going to go try it out and... Oh. Oh. When I was younger, you know, you do that, that thing where you're trying to, to get your parents to pay attention to you. Mm-hmm. And m- my father was a uh, mechanic mm-hmm. and his back always hurt. And so he would have us walk on his back. But when he was sitting, come up and massage his shoulders and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, over there, over there, that <laughs> side, over that, do that. You know, um, and so it that I remembered that as I was signing up, you mm-hmm. know, that I actually enjoy manual make manually making people feel better right right so um signed up for the classes and uh it was kind of like it, i guess mm-hmm. it, it led me to um to a wicca too or to yeah. a paganism so <laughs> that's a i like how you went about that you you tried everything a little bit before you bought into it and i think that that was a very clever way to go about it <laughs> <laughs> You. Obviously, you learned a lot about yourself in those times that you went into things. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like. I like to. Um, I, I. I like to wait and explore before commi- fully com- fully committing. No, I think that's smart. I think some people um, forget to do that, especially with when when you're a newbie witch and you get your book and the book has all the the tools listed and you go and buy all these tools and maybe you don't atone or turn or work with cauldrons. And like five years later, you're looking at this cauldron like, why did I buy this? Oh, right. Because I was a newbie witch and I bought everything. So I guilty. Think, yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally <laughs> guilty. I was a teenager. I had expendable cash. I thought it was great. No, 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 <laughs> no. Bad ideas. Bad ideas. So uh, what what are the different types of massage therapy that you that you do? Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, everybody learns the Swedish massage. The Swedish just is towards the heart. You mm-hmm. massage towards the heart, um, and that's the whole massage is everything goes towards the heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and Swedish is more of a a flow and a relaxing mm-hmm. massage. Then you get into the deeper tissue, mm-hmm. and that is um, – so Swedish kind of touches the, the lymphatic, but it doesn't really – get into the muscle lymphatic Mm -hmm. deep tissue gets deeper into those tissues and really moves the lymph Mm -hmm. from each muscle fiber each muscle group and brings it out and flushes it um, and encourages new blood flow into the muscles so i do swedish i do um, deep tissue i do lymphatic Um, i do trigger point so our muscles they do little breaks Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when you work out or not, let's say, <laughs> say you go hiking or something and mm-hmm. um, you break down that muscle tissue, mm-hmm. but then it grows, you know, it, right. it 
gets firmer and larger and um, those little minor tears sometimes they don't fix correctly <laughs> especially <laughs> especially if you have um, chronic right like you sit at a desk for a long period of time so the, those little muscle tears your your body tries to fix them and you retear them and you fix them and you retear them and you end up getting trigger points or knots mm -hmm. um, adhesions and all that so your muscle fibers no, are no longer in alignment they're just kind of conjoined and I go in and I break that up um, I, I flesh out the area of uh, tension and push that out so also trigger point um, I've learned cranial sacral not very good at it um, but there's some um, cranial holds mm -hmm. that I enjoy doing because it helps release the neck mm -hmm. a lot of tension from the neck isn't actually in the neck it's along the base of your skull and your shoulders and if you can release that then you can release neck tension mm -hmm. um, neck work is one of my favorites um, I worked in Tucson for four years and um, I was a horrible horrible neck massage oh <laughs> I'm not gonna lie um, but I did really good hips and I had a I had a physical therapist come in, and uh -huh. she had survived uh, spinal meningitis. Ooh! Um, so she had zero neck rotation, and she loved my hip massage. So she and I worked. She came in once a week, and we worked for six weeks on mm -hmm. her neck to re release her neck. Her being a physical therapist, my being a massage therapist, working together, really improved mm -hmm. my neck work in to a point where. Um, Neck work is one of my fortes. Yeah, where your confidence level rose. Yes, and having absolutely. that communication. Absolutely. That's really, wow. Yeah, um, and I really love massaging feet. <laughs> okay. I do. Ask Jared. It, it's true. It's true. Oh, I have to come over sometimes. Yes. <laughs> Actually, so, I really do. <laughs> I've had um, I've had three classes Ooh. on um, on a. Uh, that would actually reflexology. That would be an actual a uh, really cool thing if you could um, do a class for couples, especially around now, where you don't have to like certify them in anything, but just teach, teach them, how, them to how to rub each other's feet appropriately. Oh. Offer some wine, some roses. Ooh. I'm giving you some business ideas. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> do it. <laughs> That's definitely something something to think about. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, so reflexology is something that I really enjoy doing. Um, mm -hmm. Both, both in in working trigger points in the foot, and just a nice relaxing um, reflexology session, which is yeah. a session all in itself. Oh yeah, no, an I hour agree. on just on the feet. Oh yeah, no. I, usually, my favorite ones are at um, reflexology centers, even when they go to the back and do that. Which which, which reminds me, uh, I've been going up and down a stool, all, a step stool all day. <laughs> I might need some work later. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Dude, no, my cat. So my cat likes to hang out on my um, my my desk chair. And mm -hmm. I was doing my notes for this episode, and he started chittering at me. So I turned my neck, and it was at like an hour after I woke up to go and see him. And we touched noses, and I realized I was stuck. And I was like, oh. "Dude, oh, no. I need to slowly turn back." And I was like, "Oh." Oh so, no! Yeah, so it was very funny because then, he, like, when your cat's concerned, they make a completely different chitter than I want attention. So while I'm doing, I'm like, uh, 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 and he's just like, "Mama, are you dying?" So he just sniffed me, and then we did the nose touch, and then he was like, "The the concerned face as I turned back, like, think my mama's dying." <laughs> It was very adorable oh. for cat, not for yeah. Mm -hmm. it, no, I'm, yeah, no. Being in pain is no, no, no uh, not, not adorable. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, um, it, well, was there was there any other types of massage? Oh yes, I do sports massage, mm -hmm. um, which includes a lot of deep work, mm -hmm. um, separating muscle fibers from e muscle tissue from itself, um, finding lots of those really deep adhesions that. Um, so runners, mm -hmm. they'll hamstrings oh yeah but they'll feel it in their knees and so they'll they'll come in and they'll tell me that their knees are hurting they think it's their quads and i will get into that hamstring attachment uh -huh. and oh boy <laughs> <laughs> i may or may not have made people cry oh <laughs> that's um. a true story um but 
where your pain presents isn't always where right, it's coming what's from. Com- yeah. So um, if you have outside knee pain, I would say just check out maybe your hamstrings and your glutes. Mm-hmm. That might be a problem. Anyway, so sports is another one that I do. <laughs> Sound guy is scratching his chin like, oi, <laughs> learning things over here. Absolutely. Yeah, um, little known muscle that most people don't know about causes headaches and neck pain is your SCM, um, sternum, mm-hmm. clavicular, okay. mastoid. And if you turn your head, you can you can see it pop out. Oh, okay. So yeah, but you don't want to grab it when it's popped out. So grab it gently and turn back toward mm-hmm. it, and then you pinch it, and you can see just oh. how much intense pain. <laughs> <laughs> Sound guy is really surprised now. <laughs> yeah, no. You, if you pinch that until the pain goes away, you will feel a large relief in your head. So mm-hmm. you're welcome. No, thank you. Free, free tip. That's right. Free tip of the day. I, my goal in life is to heal the world one body at a time mm-hmm. until I am out of a job. Ah. Yeah. That that's is good, my goal. That's a good goal. My goal to have. in life is to be out of a job. So I don't want anyone in pain. <laughs> no, I like it. That's smart. <laughs> and then just come to see me when you feel like, or you've done something that you can't heal yourself. So. Right. So um, the benefits to massage, I'm sure you're going to be telling me are immense, but what is one of your favorite benefits that you see in your reoccurring patients? Mm. Um, They do not come to me with the same problem ever. Oh. So you may come to me with stiff shoulders Mm -hmm. every time and I will find something new every time. Um, You never come to me with the same body twice. Um, and I never do the same massage twice. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the benefits is that your particular pain is gone. You will come to me with whole new pain. Hmm. So that's one of the side benefits. I like that. I like that side benefit. So with the same with Reiki. How do you find a reputable massage therapist? Ooh. Outside of like the big box stores, Massage MV and Elements and whatnot. Gotcha. Um, so there is a massage board. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find names through the um, Arizona Massage Board. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can ask your massage therapist if you don't particularly like them. Mm-hmm. And that's okay because not everybody likes broccoli. Right. And broccoli doesn't always like everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, if you aren't in love with your massage therapist and they're just not quite working for you, you can ask them, who do you prefer to go see? Ooh. Um, And why? Mm -hmm. So who's your favorite here in this place? Or do you go somewhere else to see somebody else? Or if you know someone who sees a massage therapist regularly, you can ask them. Mm -hmm. Or if you know a massage therapist. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You can say, who do you like to see? Right. Especially if they're difficult to get in. Mm -hmm. Um, The really good ones are almost always booked. But that's that's some different ways of finding a massage therapist that works for you. And it really is trial and error. Right. You m- may love their technique and their energy just isn't working for you. Mm-hmm. Um, or you may love their energy and they just don't quite do it for you. Mm-hmm. And that is okay. There are as many massage therapists as there are doctors. And if one isn't working, look some more. It may take you a while and you may have to deal (laughs) (laughs) might might have to sift through yeah you might have to just deal with a bad massage therapist um short term until you can find a new one right right and you would definitely say that patients should communicate with their massage therapist oh absolutely communication (laughs) is key so i dislike the word good how did you enjoy the massage it was good okay This does not help me (laughs) at all. You don't have to tell me my massage sucked, although I appreciate that too. Just tell me, what did you like? Mm -hmm. What did you not like? Was it too hard in one area and not hard enough in another area? Mm -hmm. As I'm massaging, if I hit a spot and you can't breathe, Mm -hmm. let me know. Yeah. (laughs) Um, It is your massage. Mm -hmm. I'm fulfilling your massage. I'm the conduit for the healing energy. But in the end, 
it is your massage and your comfort, Mm -hmm. your safety, and your enjoyment are primary. Now, if you really like to be in pain, that is your (laughs) thing, and I'm totally cool with that. I will use my elbows till the cows come home. She has. Yeah. (laughs) But um, it is your massage. Mm -hmm. Communication is absolute key. If you hated your massage and you didn't say a word through it, that is kind of your fault. Yeah. If you have said something, I need more pressure, and they still didn't give you enough, Mm -hmm. that is on them. Mm -hmm. But if you don't say anything during during your massage, then all I can say is say something next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to hate their massage because they couldn't say something. Right. So one last question. What is the funniest, comma, most embarrassing, comma, weirdest or most interesting thing that has happened during a session whether it be massage or reiki she's cracking up guys this is gonna be a good one everybody get comfy okay so i had a a gentleman Uh on my table Uh who as i was massaging him asked me do you like my tongue i was like your what i thought he said your his tongue i'm like i actually leaned my head down like i'm sorry what (laughs) Do you like my tongue? I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm not understanding what you're saying. And he reaches back under his sheet and he snaps his underwear. My tongue, my tongue. Do you like my tongue? I'm like, oh, your thong. And I lift just a little bit and I see this bright pink thong oh. on. Bright pink. I mean, it's just pink. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm like, oh, oh, it's lovely. And we're going to put the sheet back down. <laughs> no, I, I talked. I'm like, it's lovely. And he said, do you have something like that? And I said, no. No, no. I don't. Mm-mm. And he's like, you don't you don't wear tongs? No G-string? And I'm like, oh, hon, the only G-string I have is on my guitar. And that totally shifted <laughs> the conversation. Oh, you play guitar? Oh, yeah. That, hey. And so it's, you know, it... You saved it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not always about... This, being sexual right it's just it's it's about conversation Mm -hmm. and i i don't know what he was going for if it had continued i probably would have been you know we gotta stop yeah we're done (laughs) but the after that he just kind of fell asleep so (laughs) i don't know if he was if it was like a joke oh like wanted a comment on his like like he had never worn a thong before or or a Uh pink one or whatever i don't I honestly, to this day, do not know what his point was for that whole thing. But that is my funniest story is, do you like my tongue? I I think his buddies dared him. (laughs) Does he come, does he see regularly still? Oh, I only ever saw him the once and it was down in Tucson. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that that was a good story. So, um, well, we're going to go into some pagan news. We have some sad news, actually. Uh, DJ Conway, author of Celtic Magic and many other uh, books, had passed away on February 1st. Um, Celtic Magic was published in 1990 and has sold more than 300,000 300, copies. Wow. DJ Conway is one of um, the most prolific pagan authors. Um, and I think everybody here has either heard of or read a book by her. Um, Hail the goer. Yeah. So what is remembered lives. Yep. Mm-hmm. So anybody who did not know that and is now heartbroken, I am sorry, but better to know than not. And And if you haven't I uh, haven't picked up one of her books they're, or, or read it. They're, yeah. they're phenomenal. There's a lot of controversy because Celtic Magic and a lot of her other books aren't necessarily, air quotes, historically accurate. A lot of her books are fantastic reference guides. Mm-hmm. Um, I have put, picked up um, her Maiden Mother Crone book and her uh, Lord of Light and Shadow. Both books have... For like numerous gods and goddesses telling you their stories, who they are, their amazing reference guides. I have um, her moon magic book, which is also a great like pick up and find a spell for this particular moon or understanding of the different moons of the month. Um, so, I mean, lover or hater, she gave us a lot of knowledge and wrote for paganism. She didn't write for historical accuracy or anything like that it was for paganism and for spirituality Mm -hmm. february 19th is a full moon 
So the 19th, guys. Thank uh, you. We want to thank Andrew, Sarah, and B for becoming Patreon supporters this month. Yay. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Supporting my peeps. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jared, do you think Patreon's worth it? Oh, I think it's more than worth it. I mean, of course, if you uh, if you donate at the lower level, of course, mm-hmm. we give you a big thank you right here on the show. Like and we then just if, did. Yeah, like we just did. And then, of course, if you go up to our ne- to our second tier level, mm-hmm. uh, of course, you get that uh, special Patreon exclusive monthly mini sode, which we're about to do for this coming month soon. Mm-hmm. And if you are a current Patreon supporter and you haven't popped on Patreon, I have a poll going for our subject for February's Patreon uh, mini sode subject. Nice. Mm-hmm. And of course, we have those. Uh, those really nice little special gifts yeah that uh, that we love sending out and it also gives uh, gives you guys another platform to reach out to us to have a have a conversation with us as well yeah, yeah. and you can find us if you aren't a patreon supporter on Twitter Facebook and Instagram. All right. I haven't taken a picture of that in a while. So I guess we'll have to get something pretty up for you. Yeah. Maybe something in the new pod loft. I think so. Or I think, I think yeah. so. In the new pod room. So, um, yeah, you can find us there. Jara, where can we find you? Of course, I am on Twitter, uh, Jara Stone, at Jara Stone, and uh, on Instagram at Haggard underscore Haggard underscore cosplay. And you see a lot of your cosplays on there. And sometimes mm-hmm. even Sunshine makes a pretty appearance. <laughs> oh. mm-hmm. Yep. So you can find me on Facebook at Autumn Wolf, Wolf with an E. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram at the Millennial Pagan Podcast on Instagram. I'm not going to have another. Sorry, guys. You can also find me on WordPress at Iron Circle. Yeah, Iron Circle, no, Iron Wolf Circle. Sorry, I forgot my own blog's name. <laughs> I think it's time for coffee. All right. <laughs> so if you need to get in touch with us, you can always email us at millennialpeganpod at gmail dot com as well. So yeah. So uh, I guess that's uh, pretty much it for us here. So from all of us here at Millennial Pagan Podcast, Merry Meet, Merry Part, and, and then Merry Meet again. again.